Hey there Dev Squad, Vertus here, and within this episode, we are going to be giving you an introduction to conditional statements within C++ code, allowing you to branch between your code based on conditions that we can set ourselves. We are going to cover absolutely everything you need to know covering if statements, else statements, else if statements, and all of the different types of conditions that we can use to control the flow of our code. So without further ado guys, let's go ahead and dive into an introduction to conditional statements. So sometimes we are going to need to evaluate conditions within our code and then run different code depending on the outcome. Now, this is something called a conditional statement and is going to be broken down into something called an if statement, which we are going to be writing in this video. So essentially what you're going to be able to do by the end of this video is evaluate a condition and we're going to have lots of different conditions that we can use, which we'll be covering as part of a later section in this video, such as greater than, less than, equal to, and so on. So we are going to be able to take those conditions and if those conditions do return true, we are then going to be able to branch to another piece of code, essentially allowing us to control the flow of our code, going from one part of our code to another part of our code. So hopefully this gives you an idea into how we can utilize these techniques and utilize conditional statements to control the flow of our code. And we're going to be breaking these down further as we go through this video, showing you the different conditions that we can use and the different types of flow control that we can use, such as if, else, and else if. So without further ado guys, let's go ahead and move on to creating a if statement. So a simple if statement is essentially going to evaluate a condition, and then based on the condition, whether or not it returns true or false, it is then going to run a piece of code. Within our if statements, we can use a variety of conditions. For example, those conditions can be everything from is one value equal to another, is one value less than or greater than, and all of that good stuff. So we can take those conditions and then with that, we can then return true or false. And if it returns true, then we can tell it to run a specific part of our code and we're going to be showing you exactly how we can do this. Now what we're going to be doing as part of this video is we are going to be showing you how you can create an if statement in its most simple form possible, the most easy way that we can. Now what you can do is you can shorten these if statements a little bit using techniques which I will actually show you as part of this video but what I do advise is that you keep it to the simplified version which I'm going to start off by showing as it's a little bit more beginner friendly. But for those of you that do want to shorten their code a little bit, by all means, take those techniques and use them. But for the first few days or the first few weeks of C++, just keep it simple, keep it easy and keep it breezy. Anyway guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and move on to actually creating that if statement. So before we create our if statement, we are going to need a variable that we can use for testing purposes. This variable is simply going to be something that we're going to check to see whether or not one value is different to this or greater than or less than and so on and so forth. For now, let's just create the variable and you're going to see exactly what we're going to be doing with it. So at the very top of your code where you have got your other variable declarations, I want you to add a new one. So this new variable is simply going to be called x, and this is going to be equal to 69 for the time being. So for those of you that are comfortable with creating variables, you can do so very easily. It's simply just int, because it's an integer, a numerical value that we're going to be working with, and then the name of it is going to be x, and we are going to set this equal to 69 and end off this little statement here with a semicolon. What we can now do is use that as part of a condition within our main function. So what I'm going to do for the purpose of keeping our code nice and clean and easy to understand while we're learning about if statements, I am going to remove everything within our main function except for our cin.get function. 
Now within here, we are going to move on to actually creating our if statement. So the first thing that you want to do for your if statement is simply type in if. And then with this, what we're then going to do is create brackets. Now these brackets are essentially going to contain your condition. Now the first condition which I'm going to show you for now is simply equals to. And what I'm going to be doing is checking to see whether or not x is equal to 69. And if it is, it's going to return true and run any code that is inside of it. So x equals equals and then 69. So this is essentially going to check if x is equal to 69. And then if it is, we need to write some code that is going to be run. And the way we're going to be doing this is by placing it within curly brackets. So go ahead and create some curly brackets. And anything that you write within these curly brackets is going to be called if this condition here returns true. If it doesn't return true, then it's just going to carry on with the rest of your code within your main function. So let's go ahead and write some code in here. The code I'm going to write inside of here is simply going to be printing onto the screen that x is equal to 69. So what we're going to do, std, colon, colon, c out, and then just feed into that x equals is equals equal to 69. And then we're just going to use the new line function on the end of there just for that. And then just like any other statement that we're making or code that we're defining, we want to add in a semicolon to end that off. So what should happen now is when we debug our code is it's going to print onto the screen x is equal to 69. And the reason for that is because we've got our if statement and that condition is going to run true. And as such, it is going to run the code contained within this. So give my Visual Studio a couple of seconds to load up. And like I said, what you will see on the screen is simply x is equal to 69. And as you can see on here, x is indeed equal to 69. So you can see that our if statement is working and it's going to run the code that's contained within it. Now, this is pretty much the very basics of a if statement. What we're going to do now is show you how you can actually shorten this. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, what you might want to do just to make your code a little bit easier to understand is leave it in the form that it is now. Now, if your code that you're running as part of your if statement, if it does return true, is only one line, what you can do is actually get rid of the curly brackets just like that. And this is going to shorten up our code a little bit, as you can see. Now, what you can also do to shorten this even further, what some people like to do is to actually have it all on one line. Now, this can give you some issues when you are debugging, as you're going to have a little bit less accuracy with your debugging. Now, what I mean by that is you can set a breakpoint, and that breakpoint will be on the line. But with that line of code, you are going to not know where it has stopped working. Is it the if statement and the condition, or is it the code that's being run? So, like I said before, if I were you guys, I would just stick to having it in its most simple form, which is this, and as you can see, it is very, very easy to read. So what we're going to do now is move on to some of the different types of conditions that we have available to us to give us a little bit more control over our if statements. So there is a whole variety of different conditions that we have available to us, and those are equals to, not equal to, less than, greater than, less than and equals to, or greater than and equals to. So we're going to be showing you how you can actually do this as part of your code. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because some of the symbols are a little bit strange. So for example, you have got equals equals here. Most people would simply expect equals for equals to. It is two equals. So if a is equal to b or the first variable sorry the first value is equal to the second va value then this is how we're going to go about writing that you guys should be comfortable with this the next one that we're going to move on to is greater than 
So this is essentially going to return true if the left value is greater than the right value. So if x is greater than 69. So if x is greater than 69, we are going to run this code here. So at the moment, x is equal to 69. So x is not going to be greater than 69. It's equal to it, and that is it, no more than that. So it's actually not going to run the code that we've got here. So if we go ahead and debug this, give it a couple of seconds to launch up, you are just going to see it's not going to run that code that we've got here. So that is our greater than. Less than is pretty much just the same, it's just a less than symbol. And because x is not less than 69 at the moment, it is not going to run our code. So the main thing that I want you guys to take away from this is the symbols that you would use for these different conditions. So I've shown you equals to, I've shown you less than, I've shown you greater than, and there's a couple others. So the next one is greater than or equal to. So that would simply be greater than or equals, just like that. And because x is actually equal to 69 at the moment, it's going to return true. So let's go ahead and debug this, and you are going to see that. So x is equal to 69. The next one we have got is less than or equals to, and that's going to work exactly how it sounds. If it's less than or equal to 69, that's going to return true. It is equal to 69, so if we debug, it is going to return true, and it's going to print onto the screen, x is equal to 69. So that is less than and greater than and less than and equals and greater than and equals covered. The other one that you do have available to you is it returns true if the left value is not equal to the right value. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So that is going to be exclamation mark and then equals, just like that. So, like I said, this is essentially the opposite of equals equals. So if it is equals, if it is equal to 69, it's going to return true, and that would be just like this. But the opposite of that, which is not equal, is going to be exclamation mark and then the equals to symbol. So if it's not equal, then it's going to return true. So in this case, x is actually equal to 69, so it's not going to return true. So let's go ahead and debug this. So what we should get now is no code being written out on our screen, and as you can see, that is just that. Now, what I am gonna leave in the description is the different signs that you do have for your different conditions and their meaning to help you understand this a little bit better. And I'm also going to leave them on the screen for just a couple of seconds if you do want to pause this video and look at those different conditions. So what we're going to do now is move on to an else statement. And this is essentially going to allow you to tell the compiler what to do if your condition that you have put into your if statement does not return true. So the use of an else statement is entirely optional. It's not something that you do have to put in there, but it is going to give us a little bit more accuracy over our code. So it's going to allow us to tell the compiler what to do if the condition does not return true. So let's actually go ahead and create our else statement. So creating an else statement is pretty straightforward. Underneath your code that you've got for your if statement, if it does return true, all you're going to do is simply type in else and then with this you are simply going to use the curly brackets to type in your code for what should happen if your if your condition does not return true and in this case we are simply going to print onto the screen x is not equal to 69 so we're going to do std colon colon c out and then we're just going to feed into that x is is not equal to 69 with the new line function on there as well. With our else as well, what we need to do with that is make sure that it is not capitalized, otherwise you are going to have issues. So let's go ahead and test this. 
So what we're going to do is put our condition to x equal to 69. So if that is true, it's going to run our first action, which is x is equal to 69. So let's go ahead and debug this and check. And then what we're going to do is move on to changing that. And what should happen then is it should show our second action because x is no longer equal to 69. So at the top we're, where we've got a variable x, set this to 75 or any other value, go ahead and run it. It's going to do that if statement. It's going to check the condition. And as you can see now, x is not equal to 69. Now, something else that I wanted to mention with our else statement, if it is only going to be one line, just like with the if statement, if it's just one line, you can remove those curly brackets and you can shorten it in just the same way as we showed you before, but that is entirely up to you guys. But for now, I'm just going to leave it in its normal form that we have just written it in. What we're going to do now is show you how we can combine an if statement with an else, so else if as part of our code. So what we're going to do now is move on to showing you how you can combine an else and an if to run a further check within our code to try and run another conditional check on that value that we're feeding into that. So let's go ahead and do just that. So essentially with this, what you're doing is combining an else and an if. So what I mean by that is you are essentially just going to be running an if statement inside of this else. So let's move on to how we can actually create an else if. So if we want to do that, it is pretty straightforward. Essentially, what we're going to be doing is taking our else that we've already got there and then just adding on if to the end of this, followed by brackets for the condition that we're going to be creating. So this condition is going to be x equals to and then 70. So if it's not equal to 69, as our original if that we've got here, then it's going to run this second conditional check and then return anything within here or call any code that we've got within here, which in this case is going to be std c out. And instead of x is not equal to 69, we are going to change this to x is equal to 70. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in action. So if we set int x to 70, we are going to run a check, which is if x is equal to 69, then run this code. But else, and if it isn't x equals 70, then we are going to run this code instead. So what we should get when we debug this is x is equal to 70 being displayed on the screen. So go ahead and debug this and you are going to see exactly how this works. And as you can see, x is equal to 70. So hopefully that should be everything that you need to know about if, else, and else if, and you should have a full and proper understanding of how you can put them into action and also how you can write them as part of your code. You've also got the different types of conditions and all of these should come to you naturally and sometimes it is just going to take a little bit of time. So create a couple of different if statements, else statements, else if statements, and try some of the different conditions, and you will see just how easy it is to use. But for now, guys, that is everything for this video. Once again, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.